Good day, my name is Dennis and I will be your conference operator. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the On Holding AG First Quarter 2024 Results Conference Call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. To withdraw your question, press star one again. I would now like to turn the conference over to Jared Peter, Head of Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, good morning, and thank you for joining on 2024 First Quarter Earnings Conference Call and Webcast. With me today on the call are Executive Co-Chairman and Co-Founder Casper Capetti, CFO and Co-CEO Martin Hoffman, and Co-CEO Mark Maurer. Before we begin, I would briefly remind everyone that today's call contains forward-looking statements within the meaning of the federal securities laws. These forward-looking statements reflect our current expectations and beliefs only and are subject to certain risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially. Please refer to our 20F filed with the SEC on March 12th for a detailed discussion of such risks and uncertainties. We will further reference certain non-IFRS financial measures, such as adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin. These measures are not intended to be considered in isolation or as a substitute for the financial information presented in accordance with IFRS. Please refer to today's release for reconciliation to the most comparable IFRS measures. We will begin with Casper, followed by Martin, leading through today's prepared remarks, after which we are looking forward to opening the call for a Q&A session. With that, I'm very happy to turn over the call to Casper. Thank you for joining us today. Martin, Mark, and I are in great spirits as we had a fantastic start to 2024. With net sales of 508 million Swiss francs in the first quarter, on for the first time surpassed the half billion mark in a single quarter. We have continued to grow very substantially, just shy of 30% on a constant currency basis, and made great progress in every region, channel, and category. What makes us especially proud is that we are achieving this growth at an ever increasing higher profitability. Our gross profit margin of close to 60% in the first quarter underscores the power of our strategy to be the most premium global sports brand. Allow me to shine some light on the progress that ON has made in our core strategic areas. At ON, everything starts with running. The lightning and rain strategy, winning on the race course with next level innovation and gaining market share with everyday runners, continues to deliver for the ON brand. Three weeks ago, Helen O'Beary won the marathon in Boston for the second time, the first woman in two decades to go back to back. She was running in ON head to toe, including a groundbreaking new footwear technology, which ON will reveal in Paris this summer. We would like to congratulate Helen and also thank our innovation team for the incredible work in developing the fastest race products. The rain element of the strategy means converting the credibility of our innovations and athlete successes to market share games, with everyday runners enjoying their local running routes. In our new global run count, we are seeing very positive results across all regions with market shares of more than 10% in cities such as Tokyo and Berlin, and across key cities in the US, from Boston down to Nashville, and from San Francisco down to LA. The market share gains are clearly driven by the success and fast adoption of our latest high-performance running franchises, Cloud Monster, Cloud Surfer, and Cloud Runner. We are also seeing a very positive effect of the local run clubs that we are organizing from our own stores, particularly in key cities like Tokyo, Berlin, and Los Angeles. Which brings me to an update on our own retail expansion which is progressing well and delivering outstanding results. In Q1, we opened stores in Berlin and Portland, Oregon, which brings us to over 50 stores globally, 34 of which are owned and operated by ON. Stores in Paris, Champs-Élysées, Milan, and Austin, Texas will open in the coming months. On the wholesale side of the business, we continue our disciplined strategy of being very intentional in choosing the right partners and adequate door footprint with a clear focus on performance and young consumers. 
On our road to becoming the number one running brand, we continue to win market share in run specialty stores. While Dick Sporting Goods provides us with access to high school and college athletes, who on resonates with particularly strong. In Q1, we went live with Salanda in our EMEA markets, an important digital marketplace in the region to connect the on brand with additional younger consumers. Last but not least, we have also made strong progress on our apparel initiative through resizing our entire collection to fit more customers in a consistent way. We have significantly increased our addressable market. Just a week ago, we introduced FKA Twix as a new creative partner and the face of our upcoming training collection that will be launched in August. Over the past weeks, we have also rolled out our first apparel collection in tennis, and fans can now wear the same key looks as seen on Ben Shelton and Iga Swiatek. Particularly, apparel showed extremely strong demand in our D2C e-com and our own retail channels, with apparel contributing around 25 of purchases at, for example, our Paris Saint-Germain store. You can tell that after such a strong start, we are very optimistic for the remainder of the year with many more highlights to come, not least being the Olympics in Paris. Before I hand over to Martin for the financials, I would like to point your attention to next week's annual shareholders meeting. We are very excited that Laura Miele stands for election as an addition to our board of directors. As president of Electronic Arts, Entertainment and Technology, we feel that Laura can bring a lot of expertise, creativity and technology insights to our board. We look forward to receiving your support on our election and the remaining motions proposed by the board. Over to you, Martin. Thank you, Casper, and hello, everyone. You summarized it very nicely. We continue to rapidly and successfully execute on our vision and goals that we communicated during our Investor Day last October. At the same time, the passion, innovation, and entrepreneurial spirit in our team continues to create products, results, and impact that drive excitement far beyond the pure execution of the plan. You already mentioned Helen O'Beary, but other members of our growing athlete team are bringing home more wins and medals almost on a weekly basis. From a new mile record at the Penn Relays to Tadeze Abraham's impressive victory and Swiss record at the Barcelona Marathon, to Iga Swiatek and Ben Sheldon's respective tournament wins on clay in Madrid and Houston. Another example was our global meeting, where we brought our teams together a few weeks ago to present our new products for spring 2025. Our team created a runway show that would have easily turned heads at any major fashion event and ignited an unimaginable level of energy for our future apparel business. This will certainly be felt by our wholesale partners when we share it with them in the coming weeks. The energy in the different teams shows the power of bringing together a diverse set of people, each with an individual mission, behind a common goal to display the ultimate embodiment of teamwork. Team, we are really grateful for all your great work. With that, let me move on to providing a more in-depth review of our Q1 results. We had an exceptional Q1, which was ahead of our expectations. Kester mentioned it, but it's worth repeating. For the first time in history, we exceeded 500 million Swiss francs in net sales in a single quarter. A nice milestone. Net sales for the quarter reached 508.2 million Swiss francs, growing 20.9% year over year. As expected and discussed on our call in March, this includes considerable FX translation impacts from the conversion to our reported currency Swiss francs. On a constant currency basis, ON grew by 29.2% in the first quarter of 2024. This growth is supported by the strong consumer demand that we have seen across all our channels and geographies. The majority of growth has again come from the strength of our direct-to-consumer channel, resulting in a significant increase over our D2C mix by almost 500 basis points. From 32.6% in Q1-23 to 37.5% in Q1-24. 
D2C net sales grew by 39% versus the prior year period, contributing 190.5 million Swiss francs to our top line. Currently neutral, growth was even higher than that, at 48.7%. We continue to successfully optimize and expand our digital ecosystem. Kesto already mentioned the expansion of our digital marketplace at Zalando. In Q1, we also launched our first commercial app, which is now available across the globe and which will allow for the most intimate customer relationship across all of our digital outlets. The app serves as a key pillar in our digital strategy to further enhance the customer experience, more personalized offerings, and to ultimately drive loyalty and deeper customer value. With that, we are also investing in our membership program. We have tripled the number of members in each of the past two years, but still have a huge potential to increase the share and value of our customers that connect more closely with on through this channel. As our growing own retail network becomes a more important part of our D2C ecosystem, we have a strong focus on a seamless omnichannel experience across all customer touch points, consistently meeting the customer in whichever environment they prefer. Also grew by 12.2% year over year, reaching 317.7 million Swiss francs in the first quarter. On a constant currency basis, wholesale growth was 19.8%. As previously discussed on our last call, this slightly more modest Q1 growth rate in the wholesale channel was expected and very much intentional. In EMEA, the closure of a number of non-strategic doors allows us to focus on the premium performance position of the brand. And number two, in Q1 last year, our wholesale revenues were helped by the initial selling into large new key account partners, which are now driving strong, controlled sellout growth. The same overall dynamics discussed above are, of course, visible when considering our net sales performance by region. Starting in EMEA, which grew by 6.1% to reach 126.2 million Swiss francs in Q1. On a constant currency basis, growth was 10.4%. While the stock closures led to a temporary reduction of our wholesale sales in the Dutch region, D2C growth in the respective markets has accelerated and we continue to see strong growth in all other EMEA markets. The strength of our D2C business in EMEA continues to be exceptionally and strongly validates our strategic priorities in the region. This is evident from the very strong start we have had in our new retail store in Berlin, but also significant traction and growth in some of our still nascent markets such as France, Spain and Italy, largely driven by our D2C channel. Our America's business also started off strongly in Q1 and demand for the brand remains high. In comparison to a prior year period that was elevated as a result of the initial selling into some of our key accounts, net sales in the region grew by 22% year over year to 329.6 million Swiss francs. The underlying constant currency growth was 30.4%. While we again had quite significant FX translation impacts in Q1, we expect the translation impact to be less pronounced during the remainder of 2024 if the current US dollar Swiss franc spot rate persists. Casper mentioned the run account success in the US in particular. We are very pleased to continue to observe the increased brand awareness in our core communities, converting to high quality demand and exceptional sellout strengths in our strategic focus areas. While the vast majority of our America's business is from the United States, we continue to gain momentum in Latin America. Our sales in Brazil, for example, doubled compared to Q1 2023. We also see incredible momentum in the Asia Pacific region, which for the first time in our history made up for more than 10% of our overall business. Growth of 68.6% compared to the prior year period led to net sales of 52.4 million Swiss francs in Q1. On a constant currency basis, growth was at an amazing 90.7% year over year. With the unprecedented demand levels across the region, 
it is difficult to call out a specific highlight. But if I had to pick one, it would be the acceleration we are seeing in Japan. If you've been to Tokyo recently and visited our store, you would know what we are talking about. The store alone has more than doubled net sales year over year, a true testament to the brand heat in the region and the success of our own retail execution. Turning to our performance by product category. Net sales from shoes grew by 21% to 484.7 million Swiss francs in the first quarter. As already alluded to, we're very happy with the fact that our performance running vertical has contributed the majority of the year over year growth. The launch of the Cloud Monster 2 has continued the incredible performance of this highly successful franchise. With the upcoming launches of the Cloud Runner 2 later this week and the Cloud Surfer next in late summer, we have a strong pipeline of innovation to come in our running lineup that will allow us to continue to win market share. In our performance all day category, the Cloud Tilt has exceeded our expectations and demand is significantly higher than supply. Net sales growth in apparel was 16.7% year over year, resulting in 19.7 million Swiss francs for the first quarter. The underlying demand was significantly stronger, exemplified by our D2C channels, where apparel grew at a much faster rate than shoes, or they, off a much smaller base. Also as announced, we have updated the sizing on the majority of our collection to more consistently meet and deliver the right fit for our global customers. In the interest of having consistent sizing offers in store, we decided to take back some items from some of our wholesale channel partners, resulting in a one-time correction to our reported net sales figure. With the high DTC demand and confidence in our new apparel product lineup, we expect growth rates to continue to accelerate significantly from here for the remainder of the year. While driving strong sales growth, we are also able to significantly increase our cross profit margin. The higher net sales mix from the strong margin D2C business compared to the prior year, as well as the progress we made to manage our inventory more tightly, allowed us to reach a very strong cross profit margin of 59.7% up from 58.3% in Q1-23. Looking down the P&L, SG&A expenses excluding share-based compensation were 48.8% of net sales in Q1 this year, increasing slightly from 47% in the prior year period. The increase is primarily a result of higher marketing expenses as percent of net sales. While we had the relatively low investment level in brand building in Q1-23, we increased our investments in upper funnel brand building campaigns and partnerships in the most recent quarters. We view the strategic focus as very important to support the next growth phase and the long-term health and success of the on-brand. And you can expect to see even larger activations as we approach the Olympics and other big brand moments this summer. Resulting adjusted EPDA margin for Q1 was 15.2%, up from 14.5% in the first quarter of 2023. This number came in ahead of our expectations and puts us in a very good position heading into the remaining nine months of the year. As anticipated and communicated at our full year results in mid-March, the reversal of the US dollar Swiss franc FX rate from its low point at the end of December means our US dollar balance sheet assets were revalued at a significantly higher rate at the end of March. The result is a sizable unrealized FX gain in Q1 and supports a very strong and record quarterly net income of 91.4 million Swiss francs. Which brings me to our balance sheet. Capital expenditures were 9.2 million Swiss francs in Q1 24, or 1.8% of net sales even slightly down in absolute terms from the 9.7 million Swiss francs in the prior year period. As previously mentioned, this will begin to increase again in the coming quarters as a result of higher expenses in connection with our continued retail store rollout. On the inventory side, we continue to actively manage our inventory and decouple our inventory growth from our top-line expansion. 
which drives efficiency in our working capital. Our inventory position has remained broadly stable versus the year end and stood at 365.3 million Swiss francs at the end of Q1. Finally, as a result of our strong operating cash flow of 81 million Swiss francs, we have further increased our cash position from 494.6 million at the end of 2023 to 584.6 million Swiss francs at the end of Q124. With that, I would like to look ahead towards the remainder of the year. We are all extremely excited for the Summer Olympics that are less than two months away. Taking place close to Ons home, the road to Paris and the games themselves offer a great opportunity for us to build our credibility in and beyond the running world. As mentioned, we are planning to open a second store in Paris, this time on Champs-Élysées. During the Olympics, our two stores will serve as hubs for the running community to connect and move. Many of our athletes have already qualified or been nominated by their respective countries. We expect over 2,000 on-athletes to hit the starting lines across track, triathlon, tennis, and of course, the marathon. And we are ready to support them with our fastest, most innovative, and most sustainable performance products yet. Until we get there, we will tell the inspiring stories of our athletes on their journeys towards what is for many the biggest moment in their careers. For Dominic Lubalu, a refugee from South Sudan, it is the heartwarming story of a multi-year fight towards the ultimate goal to present Switzerland in Paris this summer and the legal battle to make it possible, which is still going on. Outside of running, we will also continue to focus on further building on brand awareness to allow us to reach new heights. To do this, we know we must scale existing and new audiences globally with large brand moments, which includes collaborating and partnering with meaningful individuals in the broader sports and fashion space. One example is our recently announced collaboration with FK Twix that Casper mentioned. And in a few weeks, we will announce a further big global partnership with an individual that will further build our credibility and awareness with our target communities. With everything else we have planned for the next few months, we are fairly certain the world will be talking about ON more than ever before. Regarding our business and financial outlook, we are optimistic and excited about our momentum and pipeline and what is in front of us for the rest of the year. At the same time, we remain prudent in the way we plan for the future, always taking into account the dynamic macroeconomic and consumer environment. The continued high demand for the on-brand across the globe and the strong order book for the second half of the year, however, give us a lot of confidence to reiterate our full year constant currency net sales growth rate expectation of at least 30%. Considering the FX movements over the past weeks since our full year reporting, this implies an increase to our reported net sales expectation from 2.25 billion Swiss francs to at least 2.29 billion Swiss francs at current spot rates. As you have also seen in today's release, we are retaining our cross-profit margin guidance for 2024 at around 60% and continue to expect an adjusted EBDA margin for the full year in the range of 16 to 16.5%. We dream on. We are ready to bring our own fire to Paris and beyond. It will be an exciting summer. We wish all of you a great time and look forward to welcome you back in mid-August for our half year one results. With that, Casper and Mark and I would like to open up the session to your questions. Operator, we are ready to begin the Q&A session. At this time, I would like to remind everyone in order to ask a question, simply press star and then the number one on your telephone keypad. Your first questions from the line of Jay Soul with UBS. Please go ahead. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so a lot of great information in the prepared remarks. Could you talk a little bit more about Asia growth? Martin, you mentioned Japan, a lot of momentum in Japan, but what about China and some of the other 
regions in Asia. Can you just talk about how the brand is building momentum in those other regions? Thank you. Yes, um, welcome also from my side. Thank you for the for the question, Jay. So I think we're very proud that for the first time we surpassed uh, the 10%, as already stated. I think this is, uh, is an important landmark for us. And we also stated that we want to bring um, basically China alone um, to over 10% over the next years. And we feel we're well on track. So China is, is, is going according to plan. We actually just launched a new live streaming studio. Um, it's taking more and more share from our D2C um, sales as well. So, so we're really going with the market there and elevate, continue to elevate the brand within the digital environment. We'll um, be at roughly 30 own doors a little bit more by the end of the year. So we're also continuing that expansion well. Demand is, is great. We're talking with, with one of the key, um, key um, mall partners as well on bringing a larger flagship store. So the first one in China to life which will be an important uh, milestone for us. So we're very happy with what we're seeing in China. Japan is extraordinary. Um, it's, it's well ahead of our expectations. Um, we see a lot of tourism going into Japan as well. And there is a benefit from, from, the, from the currency um, that we're seeing, but not only our own store um, is doing really well, also our wholesale doors and D2C is ahead of the plan. And then also Australia, we're, we're very happy. Um, with with where we stand, so so Asia Pacific is really a, a super super positive picture for us. Terrific. And if I can ask one more, you know, you mentioned the cloud tilt has exceeded expectations. Can you just talk about how the product assortment and and the sales within the product assortment continues to diversify beyond the cloud and CloudX and to other 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 styles? Give us, maybe give us an update on where that stands right now. Thank you. Yeah, happy to jump in here. Um, Look, diversification has been a big aim for us uh, for, for, for a long time, and we're actually very happy that we are able to diversify our assortment across categories, but then within category, um, we're, we're not dependent on, on a few stats. Um, almost to, to the opposite, where we're now actually focusing more on building franchises. You know, I think if you want to be a little bit self-critical, we probably have too many product brands and consumers um, cannot remember all of them. So that's that's why we said we want to, for example, in running push the Monster franchise, the Runner franchise, and the Surfer franchise. On the lifestyle side, you mentioned the Tilt, definitely been blown away um, by the response. We, we had an early indication of how good it could be with our Louis collaboration that focused on that. Um, but if we had more uh, product, we would be definitely able to sell even more of the Tilt. With that, you know, we, on the lifestyle side, we now have a really balanced portfolio. And obviously, uh, Cloud Nova and also the Roger franchise are other standouts um, to, to, to be mentioned. In the interest of taking as many questions as we can today, please limit yourselves to one question. Your next question is from the line of Tom Nickick with Wedbush. Please go ahead. Uh, hey, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, th uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, uh, I want to ask about uh, you know some some of the, uh, the the new channels of distribution. Uh, you know, Dix, Foot Locker, JD Sports. You know, et cetera. Um, yeah, I know you mentioned you know Dix you know briefly in the, in the prepared remarks, but just uh, you know how uh, how how is the brand performing in in those new channels of distribution? Uh, and can you just give us you know an update on the uh, the door counts uh, for for those retailers? Yeah, so I want to I wanna, um, basically take this question to, to one level higher as well to give everyone a bit of an overview of like how our business is changing. I think what we're seeing is that with those key accounts coming on board, that they're playing a more and more important role in our overall sales. And what we're very happy with is that we're able to sell the product that we want to sell in those stores. So if you look, for example, at DSG, the one product is resonating really, really well. And this is in the end what's also reflected on on the runners count and um, that we already mentioned so we're catering and we're learning to cater more to these um, bigger doors where we're performing very well at the same time we want to continue to be great partners with with the field accounts and with run specialty and so so we're investing a lot also in warehousing capabilities on being able to fulfill reorders um, which is very very important for for those businesses so that we can really have the product in the channel when the consumer wants it and so we're right in the process basically especially in the us in seeing a little bit of that shift overall the number is very very positive so demand is is, is extremely strong and that's what you see reflected in the overall number 
Now, very quickly, number of doors, DSG, we're currently at 220 doors, and by the end of the year, we'll be at 285. We will add um, those additional 65 doors um, as part of fall winter 24 with the selling of the, of the new collection. Your next question is from the line of Christina Fernandez with Chelsea Advisory Group. Please go ahead. Good morning. I wanted to see if you can talk about how the order books have been trending in the past couple of months since we last spoke, particularly in the back half. Last call, I think, um, if I recall, you mentioned that given where the order book trended, there could be upside to the outlook for the year. That's still the case. Um, any color there would be helpful. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Christina. Let me maybe um, go a, a level higher here, but come back to your to your specific number. Um, so, as as we had mentioned in the in the prepared remarks, we really had a great start into the year, and especially our D two C channels have seen a really strong growth globally. Um, and at the same time, we we were fully in a position to fulfill that demand uh, from a from a warehouse and inventory perspective. Um, if uh, if you look at our Q1 results, they also strongly confirm the pillars of growth that we outlined at the investor day last year. Um, so from winning and running to uh, the performance of our own retail stores to apparel. And now over the next months, we we expect uh, really big brand moments. And um, we are super excited about this. So if we look ahead into the next, uh, for the rest of the year, then really... That big bang in summer is our focus. So really the, the months of June, July, August around the Olympics, this is where we will focus on also when it comes to, to our marketing budget. Um, so it's less about Q2, Q3. Uh, it's, it's really during summer, our goal is to elevate the, the brand to a new level. Um, if we, if we look at how we started into um, the second quarter, then that's, that start was good. So that the, Demand for the brand remains high. Mark was, was just uh, sharing that. Um, so across all our different channels. And um, especially some key stars that also Casper mentioned earlier, they have a, a very strong demand, uh, partially even higher than expected. And so if we, if we now factor in also the transition that we are doing on the warehouse side, um, this puts us partially also in a, in, a, in a challenging position to have the, the right products at the right customer at the right time. And this is clearly a focus for us in the, in the weeks to come. Um, but if we look at our order book um, for the second half of the year, um, and uh, that's, that's, that growth is beyond the growth that we have in our, in our guidance, um, we expect a strong demand to, to continue to, to grow and be there. And uh, this is fully uh, behind the guidance that we have given and confirms uh, the strong outlook that is there. Your next question is from the line of Aubrey Tianello with BNP Pariba. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking the question. Uh, wanted to touch on the Americas region and the strength you saw there in 1Q. Is there any more color you can provide on, on how America's performed uh, in, in terms of the channels? And then is there any change to what you're seeing or just how you're thinking about the Americas uh, compared to a quarter ago for the rest of the year? Thanks. So I, I think important for what is what, what Mark said in the, in the beginning. Um, we, we are seeing a, basically a, a, a change in how our business in the U.S. is, is built and uh, what is the share of key account, what is the share of, um, of field accounts, um, what is the, the contribution of, of key accounts also in the online business. And um, as, as shared, the demand for the brand across all the different channels um, remained super high. And this is, uh, I think, the, the important piece that uh, demand is there. And now we are fully focused on executing in this new environment and to make sure that we bring the right product to the right customer to the, through the right channel um, with the goal of uh, growing our D2C channel uh, stronger than our uh, wholesale channel as we outlined this in the in the investor day. But uh, really we are uh, very confident on what we are seeing in the US 
and uh, some of the big brand moments that we have planned over the next uh, months, they uh, will further elevate our our um, brand awareness in the US especially. Your next question is from the line of Alex Stratton with Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thanks. This is Chad Burtnow on for Alex Stratton. Can you first talk about what the cadence of sales was within the quarter uh, and then any color on trends you've, you saw in April? Thanks. Yeah, I think we, so we already elaborated on, on now in the last two, in the last two comments really on how we're looking at the next couple of months, really want to reiterate how important summer is for us. I think we, we're going to, we're focusing on bringing new partnerships to life. We're focusing on the Olympics a lot. And so we're not, you know, we're really not running our business on a month by month basis. We're running it very long term. And this summer is a very important um, part of that where we aim to take the, the brand to, to a different level. And I think the answer to Q, Q1 is then the same. Um, I think we're reporting quarters on the months. But basically, we're very happy with, with how the month has unfolded. Um, it was a good January. It was a great February. It was a great March. So, and this has resulted in, in the overall result. It was not skewed towards a certain month or there's no trend or whatever that you could read into those numbers. Your next question is from the line of John Kernan with TD Cowan. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Congrats on all the momentum. I just wanted to talk to the gross margin outlook and you know, your gross margin's up about 800 basis points from Q1 2022. How should we think about uh, the gross margin outlook for the remainder of the year and how just the flow uh, of, of COGS as we get through into the back half of the year? Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the, for the question, Sean. So we were always saying that our business uh, has been operating on our target margin for quite a while already. Um, uh, but that in the past, we had uh, many times um, external effects that basically didn't allow us to, to report that full margin. And uh, I think Q1 is now a further uh, confirmation of, of that message. And um, the, the upside from, from last year is uh, clearly driven by the strong uh, D2C performance and uh, the higher mix of, uh, from the D2C channels that, that we have in there. Um, at the same time, um, we mentioned it on the call, we, uh, we managed our uh, inventory very successfully over the last uh, 12 to 14 months. So we have less impacts from, from that side, uh, which, which also uh, had an impact on our Q1 numbers last year. And um, so our guidance for the, for the full year is uh, to be around 60%. Um, our long-term goal is to be 60% plus. And um, I think that we, we show it a quarter over quarter that uh, we are operating the business on that level. We have a very high share of full price sales. Um, all our channels are uh, contributing massively to the to the strong margin, also our new retail channel. And um, so this is this is a validation for the for the premium position that that the brand has. Your next question is from the line of Michael Benetti with Evercore. Please go ahead. Hey guys, congrats on a, on a great quarter. Um, Thanks for all the detail on the, uh, the strategy and the build out and the long term outlook. Um, I wanted to ask you, I guess, just one one small question on the PL. Is there any way you'd help us size the the, um, the one time pullback of apparel you mentioned in the management comments and and the accounting for that? If that was if that was a was that a, a contra revenue in in the quarter? I'm just curious um, how to think about that. And then, could you speak to some of the of the things that we saw intra quarter? There was some. Um, more volatility than we're used to in some of the near-term metrics around the distribution center and some questions on that. How, how the new distribution center is operating? Are there still duplicative costs running in parallel as you continue to ramp that facility? And are there, is there anything you'd call out as abnormal cost to expedite deliveries early in the year? Uh, or, or maybe even if you've seen some instances where you left demand unmet in the quarter? Thanks for your questions, Michael. Let me uh, take the first one on apparel. Um, as, as you all know, apparel is a huge opportunity for all and, and we, we've made great uh, progress. One thing that was holding us back a little bit is that our sizing wasn't fully consistent with what, what other brands were doing in the market. So what we've done now um, in the first half of the year, and we'll see a little bit more of that in the second half of the year, 
we um, we readjusted the sizing and the fit so that it's more consistent and we're we're able to capture more more body types um, and allow more consumers to come into the on brand also from an apparel side and that's been very well received um, and and with that we've we've helped our retail partners to some degree to to exchange uh, um, not so well fitting product with great fitting product. Um, it's already paying off. We're seeing tremendous success, as, as you've heard in the remarks, um, on our own channels, be it yeah, our e-com or, or our own retail stores, where apparel has seen a, a very large lift. We're also seeing lower return rates, and we're seeing some stores delivering 25% apparel share. We're very happy about the progress we're making there. Thank you, Casper. And, and I think we shared the number in in the last quarter, but our um, our Pre-books for apparel for, for the second half of the year um, are up more than 100%. So this also gives us a lot of confidence um, into the future product that's coming and how, how our retail partners are responding to it. Um, hey, on the warehouse side, I think that the big change we're really going through is, is the automation of the Atlanta warehouse, which is an ongoing project. Um, so, so we're very happy that we were able to move into the new warehouse. So the double count of the facility is slowly ramping down. Um, at the same time, we're now running um, a huge business out of one warehouse and automating the same warehouse. So this 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 poses a um, a huge challenge to the team, which they're mastering very well. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to to exceed um, or to show you the numbers that they were showing for Q1. And um, luckily, we have a great partner at uh, at the US West Coast as well, and so we're balancing um, some some of the order book with with LAX. And and so I think this is this is a, an, an ongoing process that's happening. On the gross margin, uh, Martin said it, um, we're, we're quite happy there's not a lot of extraordinary impact there. Um, what, what might happen is that the, 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 the product demand that we're seeing that is very, very strong that we're trying to fulfill in, in the future might lead to, to a little bit of air freight, uh, but nothing hugely that we're expecting there. Um, and I think outside of the US, the warehouses are, are running um, very stable and, and happy where we are. Your next question is from the line of Ashley Owens with KeyBank Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking the question. So with new products and overall heavier release cadence, this one Q, you know, you've touched on some of the bigger wholesale partners, but can you just talk about any progress you're seeing within run specialty? And then to focus back on tilt for a second, I think there's three colorways in men's and three in women's. Just any plans to capitalize on the better than expected performance there? So the second Yes. Um, so, so uh, I mean, luckily you have more colorways available and um, together with the Lueve collaboration. And um, so if you want to upgrade your current cloud tilt into a Lueve one, um, we, we highly appreciate it. And uh, we will extend um, the line. I think if you look at um, how we launched product in the past, we always launched with a set of colors and then went deeper into the, into the color options as the, the product gained momentum to also manage our SKUs. So, so definitely more um, more color options that we're that we're trying to bring, and then on on run specialty and uh, and on the field accounts, I think again also going back to to some of the comments. When when you look at those accounts, um, reorders and and fillings are very very important, um, which is a bit different to how key accounts are operating, and we 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 are right now in the process of really expanding and um, the capabilities. To be able to fulfill um, those at once orders very very quickly, and um, so that was definitely a challenge in Q1. Um, and the reason why we need to do that is that because demand is there. So we see that the cloud monster specifically is is resonating really really well. So the cloud monster franchise grew grew over 30 percent, and with both um, products combined in run specialty. And uh, we're seeing that we as a brand are continuing to gain share and um, within uh, run specialty overall. Casper already mentioned that um, we see that other brands um, are investing a lot into the channel, which is great. Um, I feel the channel is important to us and we want to continue to elevate it. And we continue to deliver amazing innovation, as you saw on Helen's feet, and, and we're confident this will continue to allow us to, to perform well in the channel. Your next question is from the line of Jonathan Comp with Baird. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Um, just two questions. Martin, if I could just ask any more color on how you're planning, uh, really, really, as you finish you know, Q2 and then into the second half, given 
you are assuming some revenue acceleration from the first quarter and you called out a dynamic environment. So just any more color on, on your planning there. And then maybe Casper more broadly, um, this is the first time you're engaging non-sports brand ambassadors. So just could you give more color on the strategy there? Any thoughts on how you see that developing over time? And then your existing partnerships with, with Roger and others, any uh, any changes in the nature of those relationships or how you view some of the you know, longer standing brand brand ambassador relationships. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, John. So, as as mentioned, the, um, our focus is on the on the months around the the Olympics. Um, this is also where we um, allocate the, the the strongest part of the of the marketing budget. Um, so clearly, also when it comes to to uh, the performance of our e-com business, um, this is where we will fuel that performance the strongest. Um, and 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 so rather holding a little bit back before to really uh, uh, optimize the the moment that we expect to have out of uh, out of the the great things that we are about to to speak about. Um, and at the same time, as I as I mentioned, uh, the order book in in our with our wholesale partners is is very strong, and we have uh, great product launches uh, still to come for the second half of the year and also for for the rest of uh, of uh, this quarter. Um, and and so this will be delivered as as normal, um, and and so this is driving the the acceleration. Um, we mentioned some of the impacts that um, hindered us to 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 show a stronger growth rate in the in the in the first quarter, um, or the, the 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 stronger base that was there from last year, um, and so this gives us the confidence that. Uh, the at least thirty percent guidance um, is, um, is 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 basically um, the the right one, seeing where where the demand is at the moment. And hi, John. Happy to comment on the celebrity endorsement question. We really feel that the rules of engagement have changed between brands and celebrities, um, as we've we've shown with the Roger partnership that we set up as a multi-decade partnership. Um, the consumers are really asking why. Uh, it's not just it's not just marketing. Um, what's the deeper collaboration? And so that's what we're that's what we're looking for in partners. Now um, we don't feel that our playing field should just be sports. You know, there's other influences uh, in culture. And FK Twigs as both you know as an artist, she's a performer, she's a singer, she's a dancer. Um, she's a, a incredibly fit person. We feel that she's a great match for the brand, and we'll, we'll, we'll use her to gain further ground into the training um, space. Um, and you know, those kind of partnerships is definitely something that you you might see more of uh, from on in the future. And then to to answer your third question in one question, um, thank you for asking the Roger question. Um, very important for us, and I think also for this call. So. The partnership between between Roger and On is extremely long term, and we're very very happy in 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 how it's shaping up. And the Roger franchise has grown over forty five percent this quarter, so we're seeing that the partnership is working from a product perspective. Roger spends a lot of time here, and he's very very committed to it. Then at the same time, the partnership is very important for how we shape tennis and how we can use tennis to influence um, the all day appearance of the brand as well. And you're all experiencing the successes of, of Iga and Ben. They wouldn't be possible without Roger. And tomorrow, we'll basically release the next set of athletes together with Roger. And you'll see that many of those athletes are still um, in the very, very early stages of their career. So this shows, again, that we're really in this for the long run. So we're very happy that Roger is committed for the long run. You all know that we cannot comment on a short-term share sales speculation for anyone. Um, but we're super, super happy of where we are, and Roger is super committed to it. Your next question is from the line of Anna Andriva with Needham. Please go ahead. Um, great. Thanks so much, and congrats on a nice quarter, and thanks for all the colors so far. Uh, we just had a quick follow-up on wholesale. Uh, came in a little bit above expectations. Uh, despite the door closures uh, during the quarter. What was the sales impact from the door closures? Uh, did that come in in line with plan? And just curious, are you seeing sales transfer elsewhere from that? 
And just remind us, how should we think about this impact to the second quarter? Yeah, so the impact overall over the full year of the door closures in EMEA is roughly 10%, as also stated as um, in the last earnings call. Um, it's a bit heavier in Q1 and Q3, as those are, are kind of the larger selling months um, for, for the accounts. So it's heavier in, in Q1. Um, so so it's a bit higher than 10% of the wholesale volume. So this is important that the 10% is always 10% of the wholesale volume in, in EMEA and not the overall one. So it's a bit heavier in Q1, will be a bit heavier in Q3, and then um, kind of slightly below 10% in Q2, and then way, way more down in, in Q4. So did in Q4. Totally in line with expectations. Um, and, and what we're clearly seeing is we are able um, to continue to build on as a performance brand in the channel that are serving a performance consumer. We're also able to bring in even younger consumers into the brand. Um, so... We started a partnership with Sports Direct in Europe to cater to that younger athlete, and that's working very, very well. So, for example, we were the number one running brand um, when we launched the brand at, at the London Oxford Street um, store of Sports Direct, and we're continuing to see on amongst the top two or top three brands in the doors where we're in. And then we also launched with Zalando, um, so, so in Europe. So we also um, already spoke about that in the prepared remarks. And we're seeing um, very clearly that our own channel is profiting from, from some of the styles that are not available anymore in, in some of the comfort doors. Your next question is line of Janine Stitcher with BTIG. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I um, want to ask you about the store format. I think you opened a larger store format earlier this year in Portland. I just wanted to know what some of the learnings were from that and if there's anything there that you're seeing that will incorporate your future opening. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, we're super excited about the Portland M store launch, which was a relocation from a smaller store that, that we had into a 315 square meter um, front of house store. So this is not the, the largest format that we have. So for example, um, London is bigger, but then also our our um, Paris store will be bigger. Um, Milano will open uh, this year with roughly 500 square meters. So what, what it means is basically we're looking at three different store types. We got flagship stores. So you can look at Milano there in New York. Flat Iron will open and um, you have Champs-Élysées. So those are the largest formats. Then we got kind of medium sized um, formats. So for example, um, Paris Saint-Germain would be, would be one. Austin is one that's opening. Miami is one. And then you have the smaller formats, which are mainly relevant in China. What we're seeing is that larger formats work well for on. They work well when they're in high street locations because we can also attract um, tourists. And so that's, for example, one reason why Japan is working very, very well as well. And, and then we're also seeing that in order to bring apparel to life, we need larger stores. So the collection is growing. And we need to be able to bring the zoning to life that we have in the stores according to the sports activities. So this is a change that's happening. This is a change that you're already seeing in Portland. And that's working very well. So, so we're very happy with the store opening and how own retail is, is trending. Your next question is from the line of Joseph Savella with True Securities. Please go ahead. Hey guys, thanks so much for taking the call. Um, just want to follow up on the earlier questions on the America's business trends in 2Q. Is there any more color you can give on the D2C side specifically? And uh, are you seeing any impacts to your D2C business as your wholesale segmentation kind of continues to evolve? Thanks. Yeah, uh, just reiterating what we said. Um, important is that the demand for the brand remains high in the in a geography um, because this allows us to uh, use our channels in the right way and to make sure that they serve the customer in the best possible way um, while at the same time we are driving also the highest margin for on out of this combined with a durable growth um, and and so that stays high um, i mentioned we we are holding back on some of the digital spendings uh, in the beginning of the quarter to really uh, make use of the of the summer then. Um, but demand is strong and um, it's it's absolutely the right decision that we that we took over the last two years to expand into those key accounts 
They significantly elevated the brand in the region. They allow us to reach the right customers. They are selling the right products. And, um, and in the end, there is a mutual uh, benefit for, for both channels. So our retail, uh, our e-com is, is supporting the wholesale channel and the other way around. So we really believe in the, in the strengths of this multi-channel um, uh, business model that we are having. Your next question is from the line of Dylan Cardin with William Blair. Please go ahead. Thank you. I'm just curious if there's any thought of the need to hedge currency. And, and if you could remind us what fluctuations in the U.S. dollar to Swiss franc, um, how that flows through to gross margin in particular, given that I think your cost of goods is primarily denominated in dollars. And then, sorry, just in the interest of sort of setting expectations appropriately, any way to quantify or speak to the big bang, you've kind of called it out as a big bang, but the lift that you're expecting in around the Olympics as it's embedded in guidance? Thanks. The big bang is only a big bang if we don't talk about it before. So uh, <laughs> we, will keep this, uh, we will keep this secret. Um, the, the, um, the hedging is something that um, we'll be looking into. So I think we, we still have uh, room to optimize the way we are uh, handling our different currency flows and, uh, and uh, also optimize the, the impact and transparency on the impact on our, on our financial results. That this is why we are now including constant currency also in, in our official filings, uh, which, which makes it uh, easier to understand. Um, we think the, the, the impact is uh, most relevant on our uh, net sales growth uh, because this is where we, we see the strongest um, impact from just the, the, the high share of US dollar business that we are having. Um, it's already much more naturally hedged when it comes to cross profit and, and EBITDA. So for example, on, on cross profit, uh, the, the FX impact in the quarter was, was only 0.1%, so very uh, marginal and a similar picture on, on EBITDA. Um, but of course, when it comes to the balance sheet impact, this is where we, where we can optimize uh, our hedging policy in the future. Your next question from the line of Adrian Yi with Barclays, please go ahead. Great, thank you very much and congratulations on a great start to the quarter. My question is on um, inventory. Uh, it's extremely clean and lean, and that's great. We love to see that. But really, my question is, how reliable and stable is sort of the global supply chain, and how confident are you in case capacity for the back half of the year and potentially any impact of the Big Bang? Um, and then kind of my follow-on to that really is, uh, can you just talk about generally the evolution and the diversification of your supply chain as you expand into other categories like apparel? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So... To take the big bang question first, um, I just received videos of leaving the product for the leave the product and for the big bang leaving the factories yesterday. So I think the supply chain is, is definitely ready for it. Um, but hey, I think what's out we plan our supply chain for obviously the marketing activations that we have throughout the year and, and for the guidance that we're giving you. And there's absolutely no disruption right now, except um, you're all aware of um, some detours that some ships need to take. Um, that adds uh, one or two weeks into the supply chain. But other than that, it's, it's very stable. We're happy with where we are from a factory output perspective. So we're very confident that um, we'll have enough product um, and to satisfy the demand that is underpinning um, the guidance that we're giving. Um, what, what we're definitely trying to chase into is, and we spoke about that, I think we see higher than expected demand into certain products and into certain colors. So we're trying to capture that um, and bring that into the market by Q3. So, so there's always a little bit of time lag for that for that to happen. And then we 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 you know we, we explained in, in in the LRP that we want to bring apparel to over 10% of, of the business. And we're really trying to establish the supply chain, or we have established the supply chain with factory partners that are able to bring the items that we want into different categories and um, to the market on time. And, and so we're, we're quite confident um, there. And we're also really looking forward to, to be able to talk more about innovation that Helen O'Beary 
was was wearing and um, when she was running Boston. So we'll talk about more more about that around the Olympics, and and we feel this this can have a quite an important impact on on how we look at creating product for the future. Today's final question will come from the line of Sam Poser with William Trading. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for taking my questions. I, I guess I, I just have a couple of follow-ups. The one, the whole. Can you give us what the wholesale growth by region was? Um, number two, um, can you also talk about sort of the the Europe trend, less the, you know. If the demand's so great, why is the impact of the store closures as great as it is, given that if the demand is sort of doesn't change when you close accounts, those sales should just move to other places? How do you think about that? Yeah, so we, we cannot uh, uh, break down the, the, the channels into the different, different regions, um, but uh, very clearly in Europe, um, we have the impact from the store closures. What we also see in Europe, and we spoke about this on the last call already, is uh, is the challenging environment uh, that we see with uh, some key account partners in in Central Europe uh, around the uh, the bankruptcy of the of the Signa Group. Um, so chains like like Spotcheck and, and Karstadt that are heavily impacted there. Uh, with a high level of uncertainty, certain store closures that are confirmed. So that clearly impacts us, it impacts the, the customer. Um, and, and so therefore, um, the, basically the, the, the network there to fulfill the, the demand is, uh, is, is weaker in wholesale. And this is also why we see uh, a very strong acceleration of our D2C business in, in, in that region. And at the same time, looking more into Western Europe and Southern Europe, um, so Italy, Spain, France, uh, UK, um, there we see uh, really strong growth rates across both channels. Um, so there we, we have a, a functional system of, of wholesale partners and, and our D2C outlets in order to capture that, the, that demand. Thank you all for joining the On Holding AG first quarter 2024 results conference call. Thank you for joining. You may now dismiss.